Hey guys, just wanted to do a quick review of the new Dally Smart BMS and I'm currently using the screen attachment with it. So I wanted to go over mainly in this video uh, the features of the screen and some of the pros and cons. So let's go over some of the pros of it. The screen is just under four and a half inches diagonal um, without the bezel, just the screen real estate itself. Um, and it isn't too thick. Um, I can't really get a measurement after I got it installed, uh, but you can see it is fairly fairly thin there. It just uses these little plastic clips with some M3 screws that sandwich it against the surface to hold it in. It takes just a single four pin cable that plugs into the BMS to power it and send all the data. Um, and it, the setup is super clean. So if you guys have ever used like uh, those little shunts with the relays built in or sometimes you use an external relay and they have like the protection settings on the screen um, It just adds in a lot of a lot of extra wiring uh, So this is very simple. I mean, it's just you know your regular standard output out of your BMS like you normally have and like I said the one wire that plugs in and Then it does all the protections as a standard BMS would um, So it, yeah, it makes the setup really clean uh, especially for these portable battery boxes when you don't have a lot of space to work with. Um, the screen is also very low power, so the screen is off right now. Let's grab an amp clamp and take a look at what it's taken. So. And I really haven't seen this change much from being on or off. It takes very little power. Uh, we'll do this again when we turn it on here in a minute. Uh, so, another nice thing about the Smart BMS in general is it has it has a temperature probe on it, and in the screen settings it has temperature settings. So you can technically set like a low temperature cutoff or a high temperature cutoff, and then it should stop charging. So that would be really nice. Uh, however, I haven't been able to test that feature. Um, I'll go over that here in a minute when we get the screen turned on. Uh, the other nice thing about the Smart BMS is you can get different attachments for this. So instead of the, the screen plugging in, you could get a USB cable and plug it directly into your computer. And then you use an app on your computer. You can get a Bluetooth plug-in, and then you connect it to your phone, use the app on the phone. Uh, you can also get like one of those little cell battery level monitors. Um, it literally looks like a battery cell, and it has a you know like green to red and all the little lines to tell you how how uh, the state of charge of the battery is. So that's pretty cool. Um, so I guess with that being said, let's talk about some of the cons. As you guys may have noticed, I've touched this a few times, and the screen hasn't done anything. So this is probably the biggest con that I have found with this screen is that the only way to turn the screen on is by charging or discharging the battery. And what I found, I think it's about four and a half to five amps and then the uh, screen will turn on. So I'm gonna grab my charger real quick and I'm just gonna give it a charge just to kick the screen on. Yep, so right at five amps, when the charger hit five amps, it kicked on. And you can see, right at the top there, the current, we're putting in about 14 and a half amps. Um, I'm gonna unplug this and my charger's gonna get mad. So, yes, yes, I know, okay. So on the front of the screen, it does have some really nice features. We got a maximum cell voltage, and then we got the minimum cell voltage, so that's kind of nice to know your highs and lows right on the, the main screen. It has a big state of charge gauge right in the middle. Um, I think this is basically done mathematically, though, it, uh, based on your amp hour setting, and I've unfortunately haven't been able to set this, uh, so mine is just incorrect. It also, 
has the current right up here that does bi-directional so it'll show charging and discharging um, it has charge cycles which also mine doesn't seem to work I have uh, cycled the battery a few times but I've never brung it down to the level of the BMS shutting off and then charged it all the way back up I don't like to charge my batteries you know to those extremes just to keep a long life out of them uh, it also has uh, remaining amp hours in a, like a text form and then this is a touchscreen display so on the next screen this is probably my favorite feature of this it actually shows you your cell balances so generally with my other battery builds I would carry around one of these little cell monitors and you know just plug it into your your balance lead port and then you could check your cells so that also eliminates having to carry something like this if you're in a portable situation like I mainly use these boxes for. So that's super nice. It will also tell you at the bottom every once in a while you'll see them pop up when it's trying to balance the cell. So this is probably one of the next biggest problem I have with this. Um, so this is the setting screen. I'll see if I can get you guys a good look at that. Oh, light glare is real. So hopefully you can see those settings if you want to pause and take a look at them but essentially you have your screen down here you can set how long the screen stays on for um, as I mentioned the only way to turn it on or off is by discharging or charging the screen and really it's it only turns it on the off setting is set by that parameter um, you can also set uh, like your amp hour, your battery in here, your temperatures, um, your maximum voltage, and your low voltage on each cell. Um, you know, your state of charge level if you need to reset it if it's not picking up correctly, which is why I said I think it's mathematical. So this seems like it'd be really great. So the problem is, you go in here, you press a setting, you know, you give it a value, you press enter, and then you press set. Well, once you do that and you go, say, the next page or it goes to sleep, the settings don't stick. So, I found if you go to this set parameter at the top and click this red bar, and then using my phone with a translator on it, basically this is a changed password screen. Now, I did find one video that was unfortunately in Chinese, and then I... I watched it he put in one two three four five six for the password um, I've tried that on mine it didn't work I also tried a combination of others like one 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 zero 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 one two three four etc just probably spent 20 minutes messing with it and I unfortunately couldn't get it to take anything um, so I started doing some looking I heard on some Facebook groups and I think somebody commented on our video too that the only way they have found to set the settings was with the USB cable um, connected to their computer and using the app on the machine to then change these settings and it would show up on the screen but they weren't able to change it from here so hopefully there's something that Dally can tell us about that or there's some kind of update later on I'm, I'm not sure but it's kind of a bummer I believe people also said you can change the settings from the Bluetooth app as well, if you have the Bluetooth adapter inside of the screen, uh, don't quote me on that, but I think I've seen that on a form somewhere. Uh, next big con I want to talk about is if you're, you know, using one of these portable packs, especially, you're probably going to be charging with solar. I use this just little PWM uh, Renergy one for this particular box, and you know, just plug it into one of the XC60s and then into a my panel and I can charge um, I said it's super nice that once it starts charging you get to see the screen and you can see how much current you're putting in and all that stuff so it's super nice but the problem is when you're outside in the sun it's really hard to see this so you have to shade the screen a little bit to actually see what's going on um, the next big thing I'm gonna say is the screen will randomly just turn on and off so I've had it just sitting on my bench and I notice the screen just comes on for a few seconds to sometimes a few minutes and then just turns off. It doesn't seem to be any pattern to it. 
Uh, it doesn't happen too often that I notice, but something to note if you're trying to sleep in a tent with this thing and light bothers you, could be an issue. You might just need to put something over top of it. Um, just trying to think of what else I've ran into with this. Oh, uh, so for this particular build, this is obviously just uh, you know basically a USB charger, or I use it to charge like my RC batteries and stuff like that, but. If you're just using it for like small devices like phones and tablets, your current meter isn't going to pick up until about two and a half amps, so it won't show you the draw until at least then. So keep that in mind. Uh, this BMS is rated at 60 amps. If you had like one that was like 250 amps, your mileage may vary on that as the shunt is a much higher current rating, so the lower end of that spectrum is going to be hard to, to pick up with smaller loads. Um... Another thing I kind of noticed about the screen is it seems to it seems to scratch up pretty easy. So, all right, sorry about that. Had a GoPro cut out on me. So, I was gonna show you uh, pulling a load on this just to show you how accurate the current draw is. So, I'm just gonna plug in a 3S LiPo into my RC charger and we'll pull on five amps on that real quick. Alright, turn the hip clamp. So, we are at 4.74 it says. And the screen says we're at 4.5 amps. So, it's honestly not too bad, being that it's a 60 amp, you know, BMS. Again, that shunt in there is probably rated for around 60 amps, so this is going to be the lower end of the spectrum. So, pretty accurate for what it is. The next thing I wanted to go back into um, is we tested the screen draw uh, earlier. So, now with the screen on, let's take a look. So I'm going to set the clamp back down to 2 amps, which is the lowest it goes. And turn it on DC. And you can see it really hasn't changed. Now, I was kind of suspicious of that, so I tested every one of these four wires on the BMS screen. And each one pulled like the same. So that tells me that this load is probably not big enough for this clamp to pick up even with that, you know, two amp setting. So as far as what this thing is drawing, I mean, it's gonna be very little. So the next thing I wanna talk about uh, since we have this opened up is when I first got this screen uh, and got it on, I noticed it come in Chinese. I didn't get any kind of files or anything with my particular purchase. Uh, the seller never sent me anything. I posted this on a couple of Facebook groups and a gentleman that had a, the same screen got back to me and said his seller off AliExpress sent him the flash files to change it to English. So luckily his screen model was the same as mine. Um, I was able to load the files, extract them, and load them onto a micro SD card which you can plug in this little hole right here. Hope you guys can see it. Yeah, micro SD slot right there. And then you essentially just boot up the screen and it uh, flashed to the English except for the one spot, the change password screen that you guys seen earlier. That was still in Chinese. Let me pull that back up. Yeah, so if you go with set parameters and go into here, this screen for whatever reason is still in Chinese. So. That's kind of a bummer. Um, I will put a link into the description to the flash files for this uh, in case any of you guys do run into that issue. However, uh, make sure the model matches this screen. Anything with firmware, if the model isn't the same, I wouldn't flash it. You could potentially brick your screen and it just won't work anymore. I'll also leave the model number to this screen in the description as well. 
Uh, so just as an overview to this, I, I think this is a really good option for this particular build. If not be able to turn it on or off, isn't a big deal to you. Um, and the sunlight, you know, like I said, you having to shade, it isn't really a big problem. Um, I don't really see it as a huge deal. It does kind of bum me out that I have to be charging and discharging it to see the screen. So if Dally could make this activate with touching it or some kind of button or something, I think this would be awesome. Like I said, it really simplifies the build. You don't have to have one of those little protection things with the relay and you know, all that stuff. You don't have any of the extra wiring. It's literally just one cable to the BMS and the regular BMS wires. It's perfect. So especially be good for a full home system if you're using this in a home you know you wouldn't care anyway if this was on or off all the time um or like even an rv if this was behind like a cabinet door or something where you wouldn't have to you know see it if you were sleeping or something like that but overall i think it is a good product that has potential if they can get the screen to actually set the bms parameters uh, that would be awesome. I do want to get the USB cable and the Bluetooth dongle for this and then set it and test the low temperature cutoff to make sure that this, you know, because I, I do want to run one of these in my RV and I don't want, if I don't take the batteries out in the winter and I can leave the panels and everything on there and it just, if it gets too cold, it just disconnects them so they don't charge and ruin the batteries, that'd be awesome. So maybe when I get that, I will do a future video on an update on this. We'll maybe throw this thing in the freezer and see how it does. Um... But until then, guys, if I miss something, please leave me a comment below. And if I have an answer to you, I can almost certainly respond. Um, if you have any other um, suggestions that you want me to test with this, feel free to let me know. Thanks for watching.